Well, good morning, Central. It's great to see you here today. I invite you to stand to your feet with me and let's worship our great God together today. Take a minute, visit with each other, shake a hand, and say good morning.
Amen. Oh, amen. And you may be seated. Welcome to Central Baptist Church. We are so glad that you are here. And if you're visiting with us, in front of you is a little connect card. Fill that out. You can place that in the offering plate as that's passed later in the service. And just a search committee update. The deacons would love to have your suggestions about our pastor search committee. And those forms for suggestions are going to be handed out at the end of this service. And then the last day to turn in those forms will be next Sunday. Out those two doors, underneath the cross, is a table with a box that you can put those forms in for your suggestions. Again, last or next Sunday is the last time to turn in those forms for your suggestions for our pastoral search committee. Also tonight, 5 p.m. is our first quarterly business meeting of the year. <laughs> Amen. Wow. I think my heart just stopped, so Rylan is really excited about that business meeting, so yes. So I know you want to be here tonight at what time? 5, 5 p.m. Some think it's 5.30, some think it's 6. Everybody say with me, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Be here tonight. We are going to have the Lord's Supper afterward, and you'll hear from several committees and our deacon leadership, and there will be child care. Amen. Amen. So as I said in the first service, somebody's going to take me to child care at 5 p.m. So I'll be down there. I'm kidding. I'll be in here 5 p.m. for our quarterly business meeting, and we'll hear some great reports about how God is moving in the life of Central and a report from our deacon body. So 5 p.m., be here, and then we will take the Lord's Supper with Pastor Brian. So amen. Great time. 5 p.m. What time? There's so much confusion. 5 p.m. But I tell you, who is not confused? Our God. Amen. So let's go to him in prayer as he will be here to fall upon his children. So whatever needs you have, God is here. Whatever's going on in your life, God is here. Because remember, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the presence. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you are here. We thank you that you are active and alive in your children's lives. We are central. We are family because you sent your blood-born son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And three days after his death, he rose from the dead to give us the gift of eternal life. You are here. Father, what do you want to say to your children? What do you require from us today? Father, for some of us, you just want to wrap your arms around us and hold us and minister to us. Father, if there's anyone in here that does not know you, today you want to give them the gift of eternal life. So let today be the day of salvation. Father, as Rylan and the team take us to the throne to worship you in spirit and in truth, may we just let go and worship you. And Father, as Pastor Brian comes and speaks the word that you gave to him, may we hear and act upon it and leave this place different. But most of all, we praise you and worship you because you are truth. We love you. And to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. Church, I invite you to stand with me if you're willing and able to this morning. As we sing and worship together, let me read Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's ask God to tune our hearts to sing of his grace this morning.
that our God will never leave us. He will never forsake us, church. Amen. His presence is here with us. My victories in Jesus' name. My victories in Jesus' name. My victories in the third day. This is how I fight my battles. Every song you could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever be Live for you Live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could have a soul. Worthy of every breath we could have a breath. our life on the firm foundation of Christ, not the shifting sands of this world. Let's pray this to our Father. We build our life on His love.
bow with me in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, I come to you today just asking that, um, Father, that you would give us that awe once again, that we stand and sing to an almighty God, the creator of all things, yet you love us, God, that you sent your son as an atoning sacrifice for my sin, a holy God, worthy of our worship, yet we stand and we sit by and do life on our own, when instead, God, you're calling us to so much more. So, Father, I pray today that you would fill us with your love to love others the way that you would love them. And above all else, be glorified in our church this morning. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. As we continue in the spirit of worship with the offering time, if our ushers would go ahead and come forward. There's a message right there in the song that we sang. <sighs> Trust in God and his love. It never changes. He loves you and he's pursuing you and we put our trust in him alone. And because of that, I was reminded in a song that Charlene shared with me called Holy that was played at the Brownsville Revival. Just God, when he said, who am I to sin? And Isaiah said, send me. When we trust on God's love, then we can trust in Him. If you didn't come prepared to give today, that's okay. There's lots of different ways. There's cards in the back of your chair right there. You can see how you can give online or by texting or lots of different ways there. And, and uh, if you've already done that, when the offering plate's passed, just throw one of these cards in the plate. kind of lets us know uh, how the, the money's been given in there. But trust me, Brian said this several weeks ago, God doesn't need your money. He needs you to be in a place that when he says, who am I to sin? Your response is, send me. Before I pray, one more reminder about our slips we're going to pass out after church. If you hadn't had the opportunity to submit a name that you would like to see uh, considered for our pastor search committee, please do so. Get a form. We'd like to have these back by next Sunday after both services. Um, we're family here. We want to include you guys, on, and uh, so we want to hear from you. And uh, so please take a chance and uh, fill out one of these. Take an opportunity. Thank you much for that. Let's pray for the offering. Father, as we, uh, we bow before you this morning, Father, we bow to, a, as Ryland said, a holy God, Father, a perfect God, a great God, Father all of the above and more. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. Thank you for the time that we've already had in, uh, in our Sunday school, Father, um, in early service, Father. Holy Spirit's moving this morning, Father. I just pray that you've changed us, Father, this morning, that you've given us excitement, that you've filled us with, the, with your Holy Spirit, Father, that you've challenged us, Father, and that when we walk out the door this morning, Father, that we didn't come here just because that's what we do. We came here to worship you. And, Father, we walk out this door excited about our opportunities in this world this week, Father. Help us to take advantages of the opportunities that you do give us, Father. Love on us this morning, Father. Father, as we take up the offering, I pray that you bless it, Father. I pray that you'd bless the giver. I pray that we'd give back because you first gave to us, Father. We love you, and I pray all this in the, Lord, in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let's dismiss our kids to go to children's church right now. Ages four years old through kindergarten can be dismissed right out these doors over here. All right, our first through fourth graders can be dismissed now to head off to children's church. If you're new to Central and maybe this is one of your child's first time to go to the children's church and they don't have a security tag, a sticker, just slip out there with them and fill one of those out. That way we can pair you up afterwards uh, and they're gonna have a blast, but you are as well as we continue our series that we've been talking about, Finding Jesus in the Old Testament. So thankful for Brian, uh, stepped in and just done an amazing job sharing week after week. And uh, Central, if you're thankful, can we just share that with them? Well, good morning, church. Good to see you today. I'll tell you what I'm thankful for. Uh, what a time of worship. And uh, I think some of the, we got a little bit of that glory this morning already, church, right? Uh, I hope that you did and enjoyed that as much as I did. And just, uh, it's good being with surrounded people. But the world may surround us, and there may be a lot going on. Anybody got anything going on in your life? <laughs> but it's good to be surrounded with other folks, because we're just all in need, aren't we? Really, all of us. But I tell you, we're, we're fortunate, church, not only to be surrounded, certainly, uh, by a God who loves us, but when God gives us uh, good, faithful, godly people in our lives uh, to encourage, to pray, uh, to, to minister to us, sometimes we get to minister beside them. And before I get into my time this morning, I want to take an opportunity to recognize those men that serve as our current active deacons. Certainly there are those who have gone before them and no doubt have been faithful uh, servants of the Lord. But sometimes I think we uh, just assume that everybody knows who the deacons are in the church, or maybe they've, they've heard a name, but they have never been able to put the, uh, a name with a face. And so this morning, just wanted to take a few moments just to uh, kind of reintroduce or, or let you see these men, they, they care for you, they care about this church and this community, and they certainly uh, love the Lord. And I was so grateful in between services, uh, there was someone who came up to me after the service said, Pastor Brian, I have to tell you, I didn't even tell any of the gentlemen this, but they said, you know, I, I started visiting here several months back. And uh, the church has been going through some things and dealing with some things. And she said, I, I've got to tell you that some of the prayers that those deacons lifted up and the heart that I could sense that they had is a very integral part of why I attend this church. And here I, w I thought it was because of this awesome preaching that was going on. I just... I just assumed that that's what it was, but, and I said, you know what, thank you for sharing that, because church, I, I want to tell you that whether you know this or not, not every church has good, godly, humble men as deacons, and I believe this church does. I've gotten to know them over the last several months and have prayed uh, several times with them and they with me, and uh, it's just been a joy to get to know them and to get to know their heart, and I, I just want you to know they, they care about you and this church. And so I'm going to ask those gentlemen, I believe there's six of them, I think they're in this service this morning, uh, Alan Beers and David Getty, if you guys would come on down. And Jeff McMurphy and Paul Norwood, Don Palmer, and Troy Stevens, I think, 
you guys are here, and if y'all would just come on down. Oh, we're missing one. All right. Paul is not with us, but he was with us in the first service. And church, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, just appreciate these men and their wives, because their wives, uh, no doubt, probably sometimes sacrifice time, and I know they pray for these guys and their their ministries and their opportunities to serve this church, and uh, we just appreciate them and love them for the role that they play in that way as well, and so at this time, I'm just going to ask if, if you feel led, some of our men, you may want to come down and just surround these guys and pray for them, uh, for Jeff and David and Don and Troy and Alan is here, and we certainly uh, remember that Paul is, is one of those active deacons, just surround these guys And I thought what we would do, fellas, just for a moment or two, uh, some of you might feel led. You certainly can pray right there and in little groups around them, and certainly uh, some of you may want to verbalize your prayers out loud, and you certainly feel the freedom to do that as God leads you to do that. And then I'll kind of close this out, but we'll give us an opportunity and And church, you know that these men, they love the Lord and they love you. And we just wanted you to see them. And you have an opportunity uh, to lift them up as well, even right where you sit. So let's pray together at this time. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to just remember a portion of your leadership in your church, that in those that you call as deacons, as servants. And Father, we just thank you for their ministries, and we thank you for their hearts for you. God, thank you for the wives that they have. For Miss Shelley and Sherry and Karen and Tanya and Carol and Susan as well. Father, I just pray your protection over their lives, their marriages, their, their witness. Lord, I thank you that they're men that, that want to live a godly life that is one that is above reproach. That, Lord, they do not want the spotlight, but they recognize the reality and the importance of the example that they are for this church and in this local body as well as out in the community, for boys and girls and teenagers alike, other church members and folks that call this church home. Lord, we love them and we know they love us. I pray that you would expand their territory and that, God, you would grant your favor, continued favor in everything that they do. And, Lord, we thank you for their humility. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for your spirit. And we thank you for the spirit of these men. In Christ's name, and the church said, amen. God bless you.
Church, isn't that a beautiful picture? These guys who willingly serve, love to serve, and surrounded by other men. What a blessing that is. Well, maybe this week you have heard some things, you've heard things that, that are positive, some things that are negative. That's just kind of part of life, isn't it, church? You just hear stuff. Now, sometimes we're a part of, you know, the, hey, have you heard? I don't know, we're probably supposed to be a part of that, but, but I do have to tell you, I, I love the creativity of sometimes uh, just businesses and companies and, and uh, the things that people do and the creativity to market their product or their service. And I don't know if you all have seen recently uh, AT&T's uh, newest creative ad campaign, the one about wireless service and internet and all that. Anybody ever, have you seen those commercials? The just okay is not okay. Anybody seen those? I mean, they're hilarious. Some of them are so funny. Like there's, there's one, the folks are out to eat, and somebody says, well, hey, how's, how's the sushi here? And the, the server says, well, it's okay. Look, you'll never catch me ordering sushi anyway, but if I do, I don't want it to be okay. I want it to be, man, we just literally got it in. I don't know, do you get get sushi out of the ocean or off the, uh, off the ice coming out of the delivery? I don't know, but I want it to be the freshest, most amazing. Another one is, it's kind of funny, uh, guy walks in and he's talking to the mechanic there and he said, hey, uh, you guys do brakes, right? And he, he says, yeah, and he said, well, are, are you guys good? And he said, he says, well, yeah, we're okay. And he goes, yeah, we kind of have this saying around here in the, in the garage, you know, that, well, if our brakes don't stop you, well, something else will, you know. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want to hear that. Uh, another one is probably my, my favorite. I, I got to tell you, my, my wife, if I act this out one more time in our house, she's going to scream. But it's, it's the one, have you seen the surgeon comes in? That one is hilarious. The surgeon comes in and he says something. He's waving it. Hey, just who just uh, who got reinstated? Guess who just got reinstated? And then he goes, "Well, I think I have," you know, kind of thing. And he walks in and there's the guy getting ready to get operated on with his wife. And and uh, he, you know, before he comes in, they ask the nurse, "Well, is?" How's, how's Dr. So-and-so, the surgeon, is, is he okay? And she goes, yeah, he, he's all right. I mean, you don't want a surgeon that's just all right. Sometimes just okay is not okay. And this morning in the book of Galatians, we, we see some things and we see some scripture today that comes from the heart and mind inspired by none other than the ministry of the Holy Spirit moving in Paul's life. As he writes to the churches at Galatia this, this heartfelt message and concern because he's heard things and he's, he's concerned about them, that that which they have heard and that which has been preached, they have embraced. And, and the Bible tells us that is, it has brought a a spirit of simply the spirit, and, and it's brought life. But there are those, those agitators, those, those meddlers that are now bringing in that which is they're trying to bring back into their Christian experience, their, their faith journey, their faith experience. To go back into the old customs and ways along with that which they have heard which has brought the Spirit and life into their life. And, and so Paul is concerned about what he is hearing, so much so that the Scripture tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, he says, 
O you foolish Galatians, for who has bewitched you? And before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was was clearly portrayed as crucified. And then he says, I'd just like to learn one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? You know, church, one of the challenges that is before us always as Christians is that we face is to rightly divide and understand the the Word of God. And the reasons behind that, or some of the reasons, or at least one of the reasons, would be that we would not try to, to find ourselves in a place where we're trying to make the Word of God fit into something or to say something that it's really not saying, and it's really not meant to fit there. Galatians chapters 3 and 4, Paul is, is again referencing Christ has been tr- preached. Those folks are reminded that Christ has been crucified, that he has suffered and died for those very ones that were guilty of breaking God's law. But this, this one Jesus who we've been talking about that the Old Testament is ultimately pointing to, the Messiah, the one who's to come, the seed of God, who is to fulfill all of the law of God. This Jesus who has been clearly and publicly portrayed as crucified. This same Jesus who has ushered into a new world of freedom and liberty. Church, if you know Christ, you are free, you are free indeed. You are free to have this joy that you've never, ever had. You know, the one thing about joy in Christ and joy in being in the body of Christ is is even if you have had and you find your place and you find yourself here this morning, that it has been one of those weeks. I mean, you've been surrounded by the world this week. Most seasoned Christians, most veterans of the faith, if you will, the one thing that you'll find if you're a young believer is that many seasoned, faithful, long-term Christ followers, they know that those weeks come and those weeks happen because, listen, church, as far as I know, Jesus has not come back for his bride yet. And we're still in the midst of this this crazy, upside-down world. And God has still called us to be salt and light. But even though we're living our lives and doing family and and going to work and and paying bills and raising kids and, and have all the pressures and stresses of life, the reality is, church, is that those seasoned veterans of the faith Know when the difficult weeks come. The hard things of this world happen. They know Sunday's coming. I'm glad you're here. I don't know why you're here. Evidently, it's not the good preaching. It's the deacons. That's your, you're here because we got great deacons. Amen. But they know Sunday's coming. Man, it's good to get into church. It's good to go to Bible study. I don't know. I hadn't had one yet. Do we have good donuts here? I do know on the first Sunday of every month, some of the folks down this hallway have breakfast. I make sure I make that every that Sunday. But it's good to, it's good to come to church because... Sometimes. But Paul is, he, he's saying, you've got this joy. 
You don't have to be afraid. You've got direction and purpose. You have a movement and a centered focus. You've got spirit and, and life. And you didn't get those things by all the rituals and ceremonies and observing the law and, and you know, crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. And don't misunderstand me, church. Do understand this, though, that all of those things, we find God's grace. Some would tell us, oh, like, like the Ten Commandments. That's, that's obsolete. That's, listen, church, all through the Ten Commandments, if you search and seek hard enough, you find Jesus right in the middle of that. Because it all points to him. And Paul says, why are you, why are you wanting to, to revert back or, and, and do all these other things? Because he ends up saying, uh, you know, ultimately, what really counts? He says in, in chapter 5 that, that you're, it's for freedom that Christ has come and, and set us free. Stand firm in that. And don't let yourselves be burdened by this, this yoke of slavery. But he says, for in Christ Jesus, it's not about circumcision or uncircumcision that has any value. What has great value is the beautiful thing. And what really counts is faith that expresses itself through love. And then he goes on to say in chapter 5, verse 13, serve one another in love. That's, that's what counts. freedom and liberty. But Paul is concerned about the churches in Galatia and these people that they were, they were giving up. They were going back. He was hearing all these things and trying to add to and remember when. But he's saying, no, Christ has come. You're free. In verse 7 of Galatians chapter 5, he says, Many of you, you were running a good race, for who cut in on you? And now it's kept you from obeying the truth? For that kind of persuasion does not call, come from the one who calls you. And then he goes on to refer a few verses down about the, those agitators. Because what you see, church, they were forgetting that Jesus had come to fulfill all of that. But that reminds me today, and it should remind us, church, to ask the question practically, hey, how are you running? Well, Pastor Brian, I got some of that joy down in my heart. I've got some direction and purpose, and I most of the time, I, I feel pretty centered on the things that, that really matter. Are you running towards Him or are you running away from Him? Are you running some part of your week, some part of your life, some part of your day that, you know, you've got God on your mind, you've got maybe even Christian music on the radio in your home or in your car? Listen, church, you can come and go to church and open up your Bible every once in a while, and you can even pray and throw something in the, the offering plate. But you know what I've found and what I've realized is that you can do a lot of religious activity, but you can be running the other way from God. And it happens with everybody. And it can happen with everybody. It happens with pastors and preachers and staff members and other church leadership, sometimes even deacons, Sunday school teachers. It, it happens. I loved a great thing I heard this week, the Experiencing God class that is being offered right now. That, that's not something new. That has some some uh, time connected with it. It is a ministry. It is a, uh, it is a spiritual experience. It's a part of walking with God that you can do called Experiencing God. It was written 
by Dr. Blackaby years and years ago. But I loved what Brother Matt put out this week. He put out a challenge, uh, I think it was to our, our deacons. I don't know, maybe they're not that great after all. Because he said, hey, guys, I want to challenge you. Maybe you all ought to look over and, you know, pray about and look at some of this experiencing God stuff. That, by the way, great deacons. <laughs> But what I loved was in that email that he put out, and it was a challenge to our deacons to pray about it, think about it, consider it. But he put in there, some of the folks that are doing the Experiencing God class are people that did it years and years ago. But listen, church, this was the part I loved. Because it said something to me, it communicated something to me. And it said, many of these folks or some of the folks that are taking this experience in God class are people that took it years and years ago, but they've said, I'm at a different place in life. And I want to take a refresher. I want to go through it again because I want to discover where God is active and God is at work and God is doing things. And I want to be spiritually in tune and spiritually alive and and spiritually sensitive so that I recognize that and see that and I can get involved and be around that. Church, listen, that's people that are not running away from God. They're running to God. Then that's not to say you're awful, horrible, terrible people if you're not in the experiencing God class, but I will be checking with Matt to see if our numbers go up after this week. No, I'm just kidding. But but Paul says, you were running such a good race. Why do you want to go back? Under the law, why do you want to add all of these things? Because the reality is, church, is that it comes down to about how you're going to relate to God. And church, I, I got to tell you, I want to relate to God in freedom and liberty. And I want to tell you about some of the liberty and freedom that I experienced this morning in my worship time. Rylan, when we sang, God, fetter my heart, chain my heart, connect my heart to your grace. Church, I don't know about you, but there was a time I could have cared less because I wanted my heart chained to what what I wanted. I wanted my heart, if it was the things of the world and the ways of the world and whatever it was that I wanted, that's where I wanted my heart fettered and chained and connected to. But I tell you, there is great freedom and liberty that I experience today. And to even think in my heart and my mind that I would say, God, please, Continue to pour out your grace and mercy to me so that my heart is chained and connected to your heart and your grace. That's what I want. Because that's where true freedom and liberty is. It's not in being able to call the shots and do what you want when you want and say what you want and all of that stuff. See, one way... To relate to God is through a position of works. And if you've ever been there and you've ever tried that, that's exhausting. The other way is through a position of grace. One way is according to the flesh. The other way is is through the Spirit. Again, that's why Paul would say, did you receive the Spirit by observing the law? Or by believing what you heard. For it's faith. Again, faith expressing itself through love. That is true freedom and that is true liberty. The 
thing that God knows and the thing that we have always needed is His grace. And it's consistently church and constantly found throughout the Old Testament. Pictures, shadows, those types of the things and the stories that we find in the Old Testament that point to God's grace. Things like the Passover lamb, the sacrificial system, the covenant ratification through the ceremonial law, all those by observing. But praise be to God, church, that God in His infinite wisdom would move us to a place of not just observing and participating in that way, but that we would be brought into great relationship through a great redemption, through a great and mighty Savior that is Jesus Himself. As the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 19, when God declared to Israel, you saw what I have done to Egypt. And in delivering you from the slavery and bondage of Egypt, I have carried you on eagles' wings unto myself. God's grace has come at the cross, resulting in redemption and salvation And the response is that is that of obedience and thankfulness on our part. The Anglican pastor and Old Testament scholar Christopher Wright put it like this. The law was given to people whom God had already redeemed. For grace comes before the law. And speaking of God's law and all of that, that involved God's law and God's observance of the law and the sacrificial system and all of the things that were uh, contained in that and of that, there was still first and foremost grace. And he writes, there are 18 chapters of salvation and deliverance before we ever get to Mount Sinai and the Ten Commandments. For I stress this idea Or I stress this because there is this idea that somehow Old Testament depicted in the salvation is by obeying the law and somehow salvation and redemption and being born again in the New Testament is seen by grace. And then he wrote those years ago, that is a terrible distortion of Scripture. For church, Paul even writes... He says the promises in in chapter 3, verse 16, that were spoken to Abraham and to his seed, the Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. That what I mean is this, verse 17 of Galatians chapter 3, that the law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus to do away with the promise For the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in His grace gave it to Abraham. And what is and who is Abraham described in the Scriptures? Church, anybody know? Abraham was a man of faith. And the Bible says, because of his faith, it was reckoned to him as righteousness. That all that God promised to Abraham was because of God's grace. What then was the the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promised referred had come. Aren't you glad, church? We live on this side of the promise that is Jesus Christ We are born to a living faith and hope where there is peace and joy and forgiveness and freedom and liberty and relationship. Move from observing and observers to that which is relationship. And what we get to do is live out these lives in this way with thankfulness and gratefulness 
and to say, God, I, I want to always be moving towards you. God, I always want to be experiencing you and what you're doing. Though I may have done something 20 years ago, God, I want to do it again. I, I want to sit under your teaching and the truth of your word, and I want to see where you're alive and where you're active, and I want to be in the middle of it. And if I'm afraid to get in the middle of it, God, give me the faith to take a step one day at a time until I am in the middle of it. That's the kind of Christians we're to be, church. Because again, I'll, I'll quote him again, because it is so good. Christopher Wright was so right when he wrote this years ago, obedience is the only right response to having been saved. If you're born again, if you're saved, if you're a believer, listen, church, understand, when God gave his people, the Ten Commandments, grace came before that. Love came before that. His faithfulness came before that. He gave them the Ten Commandments so that they could live these, these lives that were fulfilled and happy in Him. That's called grace. When you every once in a while Maybe hear something from this pulpit that helps you to grow closer to God and walk with God and love God more. Church, understand this, that it's so you'll walk in obedience and gratefulness and thankfulness because really when you peel everything else away, that's really the only response we should have. Because I was lost, but now I'm found. I was drowning, and it wasn't in God's grace. I was drowning in the lies and the ways of the world. How about anybody else? And God in his mercy and his grace. Said, son, I've got something for you. No wonder Paul was concerned about what he was hearing. Why do you want to go back to that? For obedience is the way to enjoy the fruits of redemption and not to earn them. You know what, church? Let's stop trying to earn our salvation and let's just be free. Free in Him. You mean, Pastor Brian, that means I can go do anything I want to do? No. And how is that free anyway? See, we got to, this thing right here will play tricks on you. That's why you need a new one of these. It's got to be new. It's got to be a new heart that only God can give. Because the reality is, church, is that we are inadequate. We're inadequate to live this Christian life. The only thing that we can do is to be recipients. To be recipients of God's grace, to find our sufficiency is only in Him. That's what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians Chapter 3 simply says this, that we're not sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. And He has made us sufficient ministers of a new covenant, the new covenant. And church, this matters. It matters a lot because He goes on to say that the letter kills but the Spirit gives life. See, in my inadequacy, if I'm trying to manufacture something that is a, some type of semblance of the Christian life, it's going to be woefully short. If I'm trying to manufacture, you ever heard that? You know, we, just, we need people to just see Jesus in us. 
yeah, they need to see Jesus in us, but if I have anything to do with it, he, that ain't what they're going to see. I can't manufacture a perfect serving love. I can't manufacture a heart of grace, but I tell you what I can manufacture. Anybody impatient right now? Well, I'll help you with your impatience. It's about lunchtime. Now you're really impatient. I can manu- manufacture all kinds of impatience. I can, I can manufacture up some ungodliness, some, some adequacy in the flesh. I can manufacture some love that's, it's not a lasting love. Oh, it might do some nice things and it might make people feel better. But you know what it comes down to apart from Christ? You know what my love is? My love comes with conditions. That's my love. Hey, I'm just being real. I got some conditions. Hey, if I'm over here working at this grace thing and and I'm a dispenser of God's grace, you best be believing I want you to recognize what I'm doing for you and you be happy about it. Because my love and grace has some conditions. But let me tell you, church, aren't you glad that God doesn't operate and think that way and do us that way? God's love and God's grace is unconditional. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. We don't have to manufacture anything, and if we do, church, the Scripture says, listen, what's at stake is either death or life, bondage or liberty. Paul was trying to say, listen, that served its purpose for a time, but the seed has come, the one who has come the ones the prof, the one the prophet spoke of. And church, when we're trying to do life in our strength and in our way, we'll be discouraged, we'll be exhausted, and we'll feel condemned. But when it's in the abundance of God's grace, we're strengthened, encouraged, and comforted. When we look to our own supply, we're going to be heavy and burdened. When we look to God's supply, we're going to be light and free. Because church, I like the fruits of redemption. And I'll close with this. Paul said in Galatians chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. So also when we were children... We were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. Church, the principles of the world but when the time had fully come somebody say hallelujah. I didn't even have to ask twice. God sent his son born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons and daughters. Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts and the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So we're no longer a slave If you're a slave today, you don't have to be. Jesus came to set you free. So you're no longer a slave but a son. You're now a daughter. And since you are a son and you're my my daughter, God has made you also an heir.
You know what heirs get, church? Anybody? They get the inheritance. They get it all. Let's pray. Father, we get it all because you gave your all. You gave us uh, yourself. And I pray in these moments that if there be someone here that is trying to get their all, but they're doing it for all the wrong reasons and all the wrong ways, And for all those things that they think will bring lasting peace and happiness and joy, I pray, God, by the power of your Spirit, that you would remove the scales from their eyes and their hearts to see the beauty that is Christ, the one who sets us free. Father, help us. Help the one that maybe is stumbling in the running of faith right now. Encourage them, support them, sustain them as your word says that you do. For those of us that are running a strong race right now, God, please, please by your mercy and through more and more grace, keep us humble. God, we need to be humble. And for those that are not even in the race of faith, because their faith is in and of themselves, Father, show them the inheritance that you have prepared for them through Christ the Son. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Brian, for ending with that reminder of the promise that we have, the inheritance we have through Christ Jesus if we are called sons and daughters of the Most High. And how are we, how are we called that? It's by John 1, 12 that says those who received him, those who believed in his name, he, he gave them the right to become children of God. And maybe today you need to talk to somebody about that. Maybe you need to ask some questions about what does it mean to really be a follower of Christ? How do I become a a child of God? Uh, Head over to our connection room, and our guys will be there, and they'd love to just uh, visit with you, talk with you, pray with you, whatever you might need. That's why they're there. Um, We're going to dismiss today, as we do every Sunday, by saying our purpose statement together, and uh, you can go ahead and stand and prepare to do that. And as you're standing, let me remind you to be back tonight at 5 o'clock for our business meeting, and more importantly, our Lord's Supper time. And we hope you can make it back. Central Baptist Church, we exist to live for Christ, love people, and make disciples. Y'all have a great Sunday afternoon. See you later.